Greetings all, just wanted to show you a very quick uh, video today just showing a couple of options for uh, creating darker and lighter areas within Adobe Camera Raw. Often uh, we uh, start any editing process with an image uh, just by applying overall exposure adjustments but it's also good to know how to uh, lighten and darken particular areas of an image so that you're applying those adjustments only to specific areas rather than the entire image. So we just have an image here that I photographed in Scotland and you can see the grass uh, just at the top of the image there is quite frosty. It was photographed obviously in winter and just at the bottom there uh, we have um, you know, some water flowing through uh, at this particular stream uh, over some rocks. Uh, it was quite a lovely uh, location to photograph. So what I would like to do is um, uh, with the top of the image, you can see that the grass is uh, a little bit bright, um, a little bit brighter than what I want to make it. And the bottom of the image, um, I would like to make uh, this water area a little bit uh, brighter. Now there's a couple of ways we can do it for both and I'm going to show two uh, for this particular video. So firstly if we go up to the top we have what's called the graduated filter. The shortcut you can see there is G. Uh, if I click on that one uh, you can see I've got a new set of uh, adjustment options on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, uh, whites, blacks, texture, clarity. You can see all of them there. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, the top part of this image a little bit darker. So at the moment the exposure is set to plus 30. I'm actually going to put that to negative 25. Uh, just as a starting point, we can adjust afterwards. As with any adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw, everything is non-destructive. So you can make further adjustments if you prefer to. And what I'm going to do with this image is I'm just going to click and drag and drag that. You can see there's a, a green dotted line at the top and a red dotted line at the bottom and I'm just going to click and drag that over the grass and what I'm going to do is just make further adjustments and you can see it becomes kind of like a graduated filter that you would use on the front of your lens so only that section uh, between the green dotted line and the red dotted line is being adjusted with exposure now you can click and drag that down a little bit further and what you'll find is that graduation between the green dotted line and the red dotted line becomes bigger and softer. So it's not as hard an adjustment. And you can see that that's uh, with the use of the exposure uh, there, it's adjusting the brightness of that grass. Now, this is a great tool, but as you can see in many ways, it's very similar to making a global adjustment in that it's, it's being applied to a specific area of the image, but not very specifically. It's, we're still limited by that kind of rectangle or potentially square section uh, between that green dotted line and that red dotted line for where the adjustment is being applied. So it's a good option. In fact, it's a great option, particularly for uh, an image like this, where the section that we want to adjust is um, quite rectangular you can see where the grass is placed there um, and it works it works quite well now, if we want to make that adjustment that I mentioned earlier uh, which is making the water at the bottom a little bit brighter we need to click a new adjustment and drag that up over the water as you can see it's making it darker because it defaults back to the previous adjustment that we made which is to make that section of the image a little bit darker now um, if I adjust that exposure into the positive, you can see it will just go to say plus 30 there. You can see that it's making that section of water brighter. Now, take notice we have two adjustments currently on this image. One at the bottom for the water, one at the top for the grass. And you can see the one at the bottom is currently selected. You see the one at the top, it's only uh, a white uh, or those two control points are, are white dots, whereas at the bottom they're green and red. That means that they're selected. If I want to go back and, and readjust that selection at the top, I just need to click on that top selection. You can see it's now gone to green and red, and I can further adjust that section of the image if I want. Come back to the bottom section, select that one, and make any uh, adjustments that I want to. You would have also noticed um, that when I hover the mouse over um, uh, those control points, um, we have a, a P 
pink mask that comes up and that just shows me where that particular adjustment is affecting uh, the image that we're working on. So you can see if I hover over that top adjustment, it's affecting the top part of the image as we discussed earlier. Now, down on the bottom right hand corner, you can see there's a couple of options there, overlay and mask, and these are quite important to be aware of. Overlay means that we can see these control points as to where the adjustments are being made. If I unclick that box, you can see that they disappear. Now the adjustments are still there, it just means that we, we can't see um, those control points as to where uh, the adjustments are affecting the image. Now this might be if you're in the process of editing and you just want to check uh, how the image is looking but then if you want to go back and make adjustments you can just click on that little box and those control points reappear and you can make the adjustments as you see fit. If we select the mask you can see that the control points that are currently active a mask permanently appears to show which part of the image the adjustments are being applied to and that's really handy if you want to just take note of where uh, and how and the size of and the position uh, that those particular adjustments are being made. I tend to use mask, uh, leave the mask checkbox off uh, but it's up to you if you want to use that as an option. Okay so I'll just remove those adjustments so that we can uh, now look at the adjustment brush technique uh, and I'm going to click on the adjustment brush. The shortcut as you can see there is K and with this adjustment we can paint um, in those adjustments to specific parts of the image. Now you can see that uh, as I move the mouse around there's two circles. There's an inner circle which has a solid line and an outer circle which has a dotted line. The inner circle is where 100% of the adjustment uh, is being applied and then the distance from the inner to the outer circle is where that adjustment is feathered off to no effect at all. And you can adjust the size of your adjustment brush. As you can see I've just made it a little bit bigger um, right down to quite small um, and you can also adjust the feather. I generally have it at 100% because I want a soft application but you can make it quite a harsh application as I'll show you an extreme example. So you can see it's quite an obvious circle there uh, which for landscapes isn't always the best way to go. Just remove that adjustment so I'll adjust that feather back up to 100. I'm going to keep the exposure to around plus 30 because we know that that worked in the previous uh, example. All right and what I'm going to do just increase the size of the brush a little bit and I'm going to paint in. So it's just a process of click and drag, paint in that adjustment. Now whenever you're working with natural landscapes you want to make sure that your adjustments are subtle and look as real as possible. You don't want um, a highlight or over an edge or you don't want it to be obvious that you've made those brightness or exposure changes be it darkening or lightening. So always just be careful to uh, make those ch changes as subtle as possible. You can see that it's it's left us with where I've started the adjustment, a control point. And based on what I've brushed, you can continue to make those adjustments in any way you see fit. I'm going to keep it at 30 because I think that's a good amount for this particular image. All right. Now, if I want to create a new adjustment, all I need to do is come up just under the adjustment brush title and click on new. You can see that previous control point has gone white, which means it's not active. Again, if I hover over it, you can see where uh, that adjustment has been placed. But I want to create a new adjustment at the top of the image. New has been selected. And as we uh, discussed earlier, I want to make that part of the image a little bit darker. So I'm just going to, again, click and drag and make that part of the image a little bit darker. Now if I want to make a new adjustment but keep it at negative 40 all I need to do is click new and start brushing again. And you can see that continues to go a little bit darker. Now I'm only doing a very rough uh, uh, job of painting uh, for this particular image for the for the sake of keeping this video fairly uh, short but as you can see uh, you would potentially go back and um, really be uh, a little have a little bit more attention to detail to that that 
cross over between the grass and the, the water there just so that it's a little bit more of a polished job. Again, you can remove the overlay or all of the control points if you want to. And you can also show a mask of where that adjustment that you've applied. Um, one last thing that I'll show is the erase button, which means if you have a particular adjustment selected that you've made, uh, we'll turn on the mask for demonstration purposes. And if I hit erase, you'll see you'll have an adjustment brush there. And what that erase button or erase option does is allows you to remove sections of the adjustment that you've made. So you're essentially erasing after you've already applied. Uh, that exposure adjustment for this particular image uh, and you can paint that in and out as you see fit now if I go back to add I can paint that adjustment back in so as you can see it's completely non-destructive you can make adjustments to and fro until you have your edits at a point that you're happy with them hope this has been helpful uh, two methods of lightening and darkening certain parts of images through Adobe Camera Raw have a great day Oh, 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 oh.